With a constant stream of tourists visiting Uganda, Amos Wakesa has to constantly find ways of getting his company noticed. Because of the internet, the world has become global. And it has become one village. And this one village can only be found on the internet. And it's easy for you to understand that instead of using Facebook to, for things that don't make sense, position yourself using Facebook, position yourself using Twitter, position yourself using Instagram, position yourself using WhatsApp, you position yourself using the websites. And it's a very easy thing to do. Today you can go on the internet and start about search engine optimization. You can see which keywords people use to look for different destinations and you position yourself and from there you can create um, you can create a market for yourself. And for as long as you have done a good job, you will simply grow. I slowly, because of the media, we started working with the media, started writing articles, my friends joined me, we did a lot of advocacy. As we speak right now, tourism is a lot more well understood. The government of Uganda is starting to invest money in it. Uh, as I speak, tourism has brought in, last year brought in $1.4 billion without a lot of investment. Wekesa has managed to succeed with his business due in no small part to the natural beauty Uganda possesses including the Murchison Falls, a waterfall along the Nile. We've just departed for the bottom of the falls. It'll take us about two hours. We'll be able to see some highlights along the way. Uh, that will include the buffaloes, Nile crocodiles, hippos, elephants. So some of the animals you may be able to see that. Most of the hiking to the top of the falls. It's one of my favorite places on earth. And I think it is my favorite place on earth because it's my favorite national park in Uganda. Uh, this spot is where you see the whole of the Nile struggling to pass through six meters canyon, falling 32 meters deep. You can imagine the power with which this water goes through those rocks. But also you can imagine the strength of those rocks to hold such power. Passionate about tourism and wildlife, Wekesa is also keen to empower the local community, which he says is crucial to his success. One thing that I know as an individual is that tourism is dependent on a number of factors. But for me, conservation is a, a very important aspect of doing tourism, especially if you are talking about nature-based tourism. So as an individual, one of the things I do is advocate uh, for conservation, not just by talking, but, uh, but participating in it. But I also know that for you to succeed as an individual, 80% of our success depends on how well we deal with the people that surround us. What we realized was that the people that can protect that forest, the custodians of the forest are the people that surround the forest. And if you look at the history of that place, they were cutting down trees for firewood, they were cutting down trees for timber and for all other purposes. And they were trying to expand their own land, farming land, by cutting down the forest. And this is because they were not able to see an alternative livelihood out of this forest. Now, what has happened was, is making sure of the people, over 80% of the people employed within the forest, 
say rangers or tour guides or chefs or waiters are coming from the community and because people are able to see them earning a living from the forest the communities have turned around they've said okay if we find anyone in the forest cutting down a tree we'll either report or we'll go against them because they're seeing their children having jobs they're also seeing that the children are paying school fees for their children having very comfortable lives Wekesa involves the community in his projects by selling items made by the local population in his lodges. We have the groups of women within the communities and the young men that do different um, artifacts for sale to the tourists. And as a lodge, we do not get any financing from this, uh, all the profits and go back to the communities uh, surrounding the park. Of course, we're looking at putting up a much bigger shop for them to be able to sell a lot more. And if you look at cards like this, they're made out of snares uh, that they get from the forest. And these cards are actually being exported to, to the US uh, for sale. And some of them are being sold here. And these are made by young men with, uh, who are surrounding the communities. Having traveled the world, Wakesa is in no doubt about where he wants to stay. If you're in a country like Uganda, you have the best weather in the world. You have the whole country, country fertile. I think the idea is, for me as an individual, it's very hurting to see Ugandans leaving Uganda and going to thinking that there are better opportunities outside this country. And as, as, as a person, I've taken it upon myself to make sure that I speak to many young people all the time about the opportunities they have in this country. I've, I've made sure I go at leadership level, I go to banks to speak, I go to universities to speak, I go to primary school to speak, to tell them, you know what, there's no better place to go other than staying in Africa. And, and I, being a Ugandan, staying in Uganda. I would like to go out there and talk about the story of Uganda. I would like to tell people we're so blessed to have this country called Uganda. And I'm doing that already right now. I go to give talks in different parts of the world sometimes about, uh, about Uganda. And for me, that is, that's where I want to grow. I want to make sure that I speak on behalf of Uganda. Uganda needs a Ugandan to speak for it. You know, someone who understands it, someone who has experienced it, someone who has succeeded in it. After a very hard day of work, what a better way to end the day uh, being at the campfire, having a chat with my friend. It's an amazing night. <laughs> World politics, today's issues, and all the breaking news. Wolf, today only on CNN. This month on CNN Go. Feast on the flavors of Japan. From tempura to ramen. Mm. We're on a culinary journey through a country famed for its food. Take a bite. Go into the kitchen with the nation's masters. Beyond what any guidebook will show you. CNN Go. Saturday on CNN. In a CNC3. This time check is brought to you by Sunshine Granola Crunch Cereals. Sunshine Cereals. Wake up to a better breakfast every day. <laughs> uh, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Hima Ramke, student. This is the Morning Brew. How are you today? It is a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, it is the 27th of October, 2014. And this morning, as is customary, we're going to continue to follow all of the myth stories affecting life in Trinidad and Tobago. How was your weekend? Do you have some time for rest and relaxation? Did you spend it with your special someone? Uh, well, this morning, uh, we're going to check in with The Guardian, and then we're going to uh, find out what's happening in the news. So let's find out what's taking place uh, with uh, news as it relates to what's published in the Guardian today. <coughs> Killed for brother, and that's the front page of the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian today. Yet another uh, horrific murder taking place in our country. And speaking about crime plans, yesterday the PNM they held their convention, and I understand that they launched uh, their crime plan. I'm pretty sure Akash will have more uh, in the news update. 
We're going to check in with Akash Samra of Hema Ramki soon. And this is the Morning Brew today with us. Good morning, this is your 6am news update on ZNC3 and the TBC radio network. I am Akash Samaru. Police have made a breakthrough in one of the four murders that took place between Friday night and yesterday. Two suspects are now in police custody after being held in connection with the killing of an alleged gang leader in Digo Martin. This is in relation to Jamaat member Dale Mattis, who was gunned down in the car park of True Value in Digo Martin. Investigators say they have since arrested two persons for the crime. Officers also say that after the killing, they got information that four men allegedly close to Mattis were on their way to carry out reprisal killings. The men were intercepted and police found guns and ammunition in their possession. Senior Western Division officers say there will now be heightened police activity in and around Diggle Martin because of the killing. Well, one man is now dead and two others injured after a shooting in Marabella. Police say Anil Jaikaran of Coconut Drive, Pleasantville, as well as his brother and sister-in-law, were driving along Batu Boulevard at around 10.15 on Saturday night when two men armed with guns ran out from the direction of an area called The Line and started shooting at them. All three occupants of the car were hit. Investigators say Anil managed to drive a short distance before succumbing to his injuries. His brother and his sister-in-law were taken to hospital for treatment. Homicide officers are investigating. Between Friday and last night, five people were killed in separate incidents. And police are trying to identify a body that has been found in the waters off Point Fortin. The discovery was made around Sunday morning. Police say it is unclear whether the body is that of a male or female. They say the corpse was seen floating approximately 100 meters from shore before it was recovered. Point Fortin police are investigating. And the Chagones Borough Corporation is looking for private sector support to conduct an aerial spraying exercise in the area. Chagones Mayor Gopal Budan held a news conference yesterday to announce that he was informed over the weekend that the number of persons with flu-like symptoms were on the rise. Mayor Budan said the news is troubling and says he has scheduled an emergency meeting with officials from the borough's public health department and from the Chagones Health Center to discuss the matter. Mr. Budan says the CBC will continue an aggressive ground spring exercise in a bid to curb the mosquito population and the spread of the chick V and dengue viruses. Mr. Budan says litter wardens will be stepping up their no-nonsense approach in dealing with persons who have abandoned lots and keep debris around their houses that provide nesting grounds for mosquitoes and other vermin. He says he commended the Kuva Tabaki Talparo Regional Corporation for engaging in an aerial spring exercise that was paid for by the private sector. He says he plans to lobby business operations in Shigwanas to assist in footing the bill to conduct aerial spring exercises over the acres of abandoned sugar estates that surround Shigwanas. And that was your morning news here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. Let's take a quick break, then join him around soon on the morning brew. wonderful time of the year by having your Christmas party catered by TNT's number one choice, Superb Caterers. At Superb, we are dedicated to excellence in food quality, preparation, and presentation. We cater for any function, both small and large. So call us today at 653-1896. Superb Caterers, providing high quality and a tasty food with excellent service for over 20 years. 
Tobago Hotspots Magazine is your guide for everything Tobago. Find the best hotels, fantastic restaurants, ideal shopping locations, and event schedules. We also show you the gorgeous beaches, romantic locations, and much more. Get your exclusive Tobago Hotspots Magazine every second Saturday each month in your Guardian. Young man, you lost something. Come on, Fifi. Don't be so stressed. Thank you. This Biostrat food supplement, you stay fit. Biostrat, for energy throughout your lifetime. Available at pharmacies and fine health food stores nationwide. Like it's out quick. Don't try it out. We go get it fixed with materials from Radical Trading. Come, let me show you. The interior, we have Carrel Porschman. Radical Trading, they have materials for vehicle too. Them have everything, man. Furniture material, car covering, waterproofing for your boat. They go make everything look new. Well, I'm fixing my furniture and my whole house too. Help me put the furniture back inside now. Yeah, and my big mode. I want to Radica anything to cover moat. Radica Trading, Port of Spain, Chaguanas, and San Fernando. Try the new Vitamult Plus with acai for mental sharpness, Garana for physical energy, and aloe vera for a stronger immune system. Vitamult takes care of you. Green Dot Limited, wireless, digital, cable, and internet masters. No phone lines necessary. Quick and easy installation. Unlimited internet access. Call 6234643 and be part of the Green Dot today. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost. What do you call a place where you get the great quality paint and expert advice that'll make your next project a success? I call it my Benjamin Moore dealer. Every time I go in, I come out with the best paint and the best advice. They make it easy to get the premium Benjamin Moore paint I need and the color I want. So it's done right the first time. By next week, I'll be ready for a whole new project. Benjamin Moore. We make it simple. You make it beautiful. The Morning Brew is brought to you in part by Wendy's. Trinidad and Tobago, I'm Himuram Kisun, and this is The Morning Brew. How are you today? It's a beautiful Monday morning. How was your weekend, Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at CNC3TV, hashtag TMB. Uh, we're also streaming live, www.cnc3.co.tt, and you can catch excerpts of our show on Radio Frequency 7.30 a.m. If you have an email to send us, you know, we're always connected. Uh, it's TMB at CNC3.co.tt, and you can also follow Akash uh, at Akash Samru, and uh, he's on Twitter as well. And Carissa Lee, our producer, uh, you can follow her at Carissa Lee. And they're all on Twitter to get the latest updates. And uh, don't forget, you can follow me as well, if you feel like it. Uh, at Hima underscore Ranky soon. Hashtag TMB. Uh, to get the latest news coming out of the Morning Brew, as well as uh, the latest developments on the news front. This morning, we will continue to monitor all that is happening in the country. The opposition PNM, they held a convention yesterday. They said the government has suspended Parliament. And uh, they're now engaging in a multi-million dollar PR campaign. Uh, this morning, our first guest to respond to that and some of the other criticisms leveled against the government, Rodney Charles, the man charged with the responsibility of executing the government's message or ensuring that you understand, that you receive it properly, that message for 2015. But as you know, every Monday morning, we start things off with the Boss Report before we begin our first interview telling you about how to make a little bit of money in a very volatile environment. Uh, but let's give you something to think about while you share a morning cup of coffee with us, Trinidad and Tobago. <music> Oh, 
well, we seem to have some technical difficulties, but let me give you something. Just smile today. Whatever you're doing, don't make anyone a rain on your parade. Just keep smiling, and I'm pretty sure that everything will work out for you and keep your eye on the prize. And speaking about the prize, well, Sebastian so Ramclown joins us on tap, the managing director of War Securities, to tell us a little bit about what prizes we can expect if we're prudent in the world of finance. Stay with us. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome once again to the Boss Report. By now, you would have seen that we have gone into a mini-series on wealth and portfolio management, how to manage your money in difficult times, and how to address the various issues that crop up in terms of the management of your money. We have looked over the past 10 years to see what are the kinds of returns investors have gotten with three representative portfolios. The first being a conservative portfolio, which focuses more on the fixed income side and less on equities. The second is a moderate portfolio, which increases the position of equities in that portfolio. And the third is the aggressive portfolio, where one invests a larger quantum or proportion of the investment in equities. Different portfolios will fit different persons, different investment styles, different objectives, and different risk tolerances. Many investors have asked us, well, let us look at the past 10 years and break those 10 years into two five-year periods. The first is the five-year period up to 2010 and the next is 2010 to 2014. What has been happening and why has it been happening? And I'm looking at as well as the question of timing because investors are saying, can I do better in this period as opposed to that period? Or as well as diversification. Can I change my mix in order to get the best deal? And how can I get that? Well, the first point that I would like to make is that if you had a magic wand to deal with what is the best timing to go into the market and out of it, then there would be no need for diversification. However, the reality is that one needs to essentially stay invested to take advantage of the upside rides as well as to mitigate over time against the downside rise, rides in an investment portfolio. Let's look at what has happened and let's look at your first graph, which speaks to the question of how well would you have done in the 2005 to 2009 period as opposed to the 2010 to 2014 period, which we have been discussing over the past several weeks. And what is clear is that over the 2005 to 2009 period, which would have included probably the most difficult financial meltdown since the financial depression of the 1930s, the 2005 to 2009 period would have returned on all portfolios, whether conservative, moderate, or aggressive, low yields in the vicinity of 35 to 4.6% as compared to the 2010 to 2014 period, which you would see on your graph, which would have provided annualized returns in the vicinity from conservative to 9.3% to 9.9%. Essentially, what it means is you would have done much better um, yielding an average of 9.9% .9 or thereabouts in the 2010 to 10, 2014 period as opposed to that financial meltdown period um, of 2008-2009 which is included in the 2005 to 2009 period. What does that mean for you? The answer is we cannot time the market, one. And two, that we cannot determine which asset classes will outperform other asset classes at any point in time. And since we cannot do that, what is the answer? The answer is to stay invested. Stay invested to ensure that you can catch the positions as they happen. 
And then we have said diversify by currency, not only by asset classes. Because you, you cannot stay in this one small pool that is Trinidad and Tobago and expect to get the advantages of being invested worldwide. Let's look at the second graph now, which attempts to put that matter into perspective. And in the second graph, what you would see, what you would see is that I have put up there different categories of investment. Cash, fixed income Trinidad and Tobago, fixed income in US dollars, Asian equities, um, US equities, and so on. And what you would see is that in each time period, you, you would see different kinds of returns. You would see, for example, that the US did better in the 2010 to 2014 period in terms of equities. But the regional markets did better as well in that 2010-2014. So that you cannot say that you are going to be able to time the market. What you will have to do is you will have to stay invested. These details are very difficult to put across in the short time that we have here. But you can look at our graphs on uh, our website, bossinvestment.com or you can look at our report in the Express today, which provides tabular details of these kinds of investments. How do you go forward in difficult times? How do you go forward to invest and achieve the best returns? We have said, compose a portfolio that involves different asset classes. Now, you cannot invest and forget about it. Over time, different asset classes, whether they be US equities, emerging market equities, will change, your outlook will change, and therefore you need to work with your advisor, work with boss or whoever it is, to ensure that you have the right mix in your portfolio to generate these kinds of returns. Compare that with what is happening in the Trinidad and Tobago banking system, interest rates are exceptionally and historically low, and compare that with what's happening even in the money markets, where money market rates are historically low as well. So look forward to investing. Have a greater look in detail. If you want to get more information and more advice on how to invest your portfolio, call us at 628-9100, BOSS, or send us an email at funds at bossfinancial.com. Go to our website and look and see what's happening with this mini-series of portfolio. As next week, we start to look going forward now and into the new year, what can you expect and how can you compose your portfolio to get the kinds of returns that you have been missing lately by staying invested in the short term. Our themes again, invest out longer, diversify your asset classes beyond just cash and bank deposits into bonds and equities. Diversify by currency. You cannot stay only in the Trinidad and Tobago dollar and expect to get the benefits of the investment world. Many things are happening over the weekend. We had the situation where Dilma Rousseff won the Brazilian election by a nar narrow majority, and the ECB completed its stress test of 130 banks, of which 25 failed. We'll talk more about that as we go along. Have yourself a wonderful investment week week. Look for us on page 10 of the Express when we provide rates on our boss funds as well as our save invest funds. This is Subhash Ram Kilawan for the boss report. Diwali time again, and that means delicious vegetarian cuisine. Chief has all your herbs and spices for Diwali. Curry, jeera, saffron, garam masala, and more for all your tal curry. Cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, ginger, and cardamom for those delectable sweets. Brown rice, dal, and chana for those tasty delicacies. And of course, Chief baking powder for soft and light roti. This Diwali, remember, the Chief reason is always taste.
Recovery and Administrative Services Limited, the leader in debt collections for over 15 years. Our advanced technological approach continues to make us number one. Call or visit us online for more information. Because when things don't go as planned, we are here to keep you afloat. Woodville is clearing out one of its warehouses for good. This is the big one, baby. Don't miss it. Prices like never before. Warehouses must be cleared. Five-piece bedroom set from $5,995. And many more items priced to clear. Faith Community Church presents Prophetic Convention 2014, featuring Prophets Dennis Kramer and Jefferson Edwards, with host pastors Farouk and Saadi Mohammed, from the 3rd to the 7th November, 7 p.m. nightly. For more information, call 653-1587. Meet Michael, just graduated and got a job. His financial advisor, Jason, introduced him to Maritime's Fidelity Finance. Jason arranged financing for Michael's first vehicle with a great insurance quote from Maritime. When Michael got married, Jason helped with his mortgage, property, retirement, and life insurance. He even got him better rates because of their long-standing relationship. Michael really believes that life is a journey that's made easier with Maritime. That is strength on your side. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost. Doctor, is it true that my child needs DHA? Yes, it is. 70 milligrams per day. Does milk have DHA? Very little. He could drink all these glasses and it still wouldn't be enough. I recommend Enfagro. Each glass contains 25% of the DHA recommended by experts. And DHA favors mental development, concentration, memory, and learning. Hey, what's that? DHA. Very good. Enfagro, nutrition tailored for toddlers. Welcome back to Dad and Tobago. I'm Hema Ramke Soon, and this is The Morning Brew. Well, joining us on set now are Rodney Charles, the man charged with the responsibility of taking the message, the UNC's, the People's Partnership message, into the campaign of 2015. He's charged with the responsibility of ensuring that you are aware of what the government is doing and all the noise that exists in this environment. Can he effectively do that? And what is the message that they're hoping that you actually receive? And why is there so much distrust? towards this government. Mr. Charles, good morning. How good are morning. you? Good morning. How are you? Now, I was going to go through welcome. Your, <laughs> I was going to go through your CV, but it's extremely nope. long nope. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, quite decorated. And my first question to you was this morning while we were off set is, why would you leave to come and, and for, for politics in Hernan Tobago, specifically with the UN? See, a lot of he, people are going to say, yeah. you leave the UN to come here? Hema, the UN, the UN was fun and interesting, a, a, a way of contributing to your country. While I was there, I acted as the president of the General Assembly on eight occasions. So, and, and that arguably is about the second highest job in the UN. Something that takes about 10 years to, 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 to access or get. And I did that in two years. So it was Trinidad and Tobago, we, we, we got a number of citizens elected to high posts, including our current president, Justice Henderson, et cetera, Francis Charles, and, and, and the climate change negotiation that is actually going to change the architecture of the world. So at what point did was you decide? By so at what point did you decide I'm coming to be part of the UN? The Prime campaign? Minister called. And I am, I am convinced that she's the right person to take this country forward. And when she called, I answered. Trinidad and Tobago is also at, 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 at a stage where we are looked upon as a leading country at the United Nations. It's not by accident that Xi Jinping, the president of China, came here. His first stop in the Western Hemisphere. And in order for that to continue, and, and that speaks to the kind of development our Prime Minister is doing, and I want to be part of that. So for me, it is fun. I've been there, done that, time to move on, help my country. Your official title, Campaign Manager Strategy, they look at you as a PR man of this government. And I have to read uh, what's the uh, top story on the Express newspaper this morning. The government has abandoned the parliament and has embarked on a multi-million dollar media campaign to brainwash the people with an annoying 
advertising campaign of self-praise. That's according to opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley. He was responding to questions and he basically said uh, the House of Representatives last met on the 26th of September 2014 and uh, the adjournment of that he goes on to say the government has abandoned parliament and is seeking to brainwash the population by a landslide of annoying advertisements all over the media the government has abandoned parliament was it the same um, dr keith rowley who complained that he had to um, forego his vacation in order to deal with constitutional reform you he cannot have it both ways either he wants parliament or he does not want parliament and this is part of the PNM's problem. Eh? Instead of coming up with clear ideas and taking us forward, their sole mission is to criticize the government. Okay, in terms of advertising, I am not responsible for government advertising. That resides with the Minister um, Vasant Barrett. I'm responsible for communications in the campaign. But the government has, 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 has engaged in an impressive list of activities. And our citizens, are, in fact, our campaign, the government's campaign, as far as I understand, is people-centered, or prime minister said so. We have to tell the people what we're doing. How do they access food, but uh, food cards? How do they enter the drilling school? That, that for the first time was done by this government. We have to engage, and uh, if, the, if the government decides that it is going to talk to its population and have a dialogue, that is the government's business. We in the campaign have to win an election. What is the message for 2015 and when you have so much noise existing in this space and the fact that Dr. Rowley will come and say that uh, nothing is being done in this country and we're being inundated with PR, public relations, and saying that we cannot trust your government, a I government think, that you're I, selling the message for. I, I think no one with a straight face could say that this government has not done significantly for the population. And that is borne out by myriad anecdotal evidence and myriad polling data and whatnot that our prime minister is seen as someone who has delivered for this society. And we are, in, in, in our essence, this election that is coming up, and I could speak to the election, will be a choice between two leaders, between two sets of policies. We have our track record, whether it's constitutional reform, whether it is at, at a very advanced skills development program, a skills training program by the, by the Ministry of Tertiary Education, whether it is infrastructure development, I could tell you that I, I, I worked at 41st Street in Manhattan and lived at New Rochelle. And the drive from the airport to San Fernando is infinitely better on smoother roads than in Manhattan, the wealthiest, the wealthiest part of the wealthiest state, uh, uh, the wealthiest country in the United, uh, the United States. Now, Ms. Charles, my, my question to you is that there seems to be a lot of distrust or uh, whether or not uh, distrust towards your government if that is uh, a campaign position adopted by the opposition or those opposed to your government uh, because they're saying that you are paying people to basically endorse uh, projects that if it were so good that people would feel it themselves that I would need to be told well look at the fact that we have improved transportation but I will feel it all governments engage in in, 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 in telling the population what they do but I, I, I disagree to your view when you say there's a significant distrust of this government there's distrust that the PNM talks about distrust because that is the entire focus of their campaign. Not to talk about their policies on health, not to talk about their policies on education. I could ask you, Hima, do you know Dr. Rowley's policy on education and is it different to ours? What is his policy on infrastructure development? Zero. He talks about Vision 2020. Which, which the, the population rejected in large part. Minus a smelter plant, minus a gas to liquids, uh, a, a project that, that was failed. M minus probably the, the, the mega farms, the Cuban mega farms that, uh, that was um, 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 addressed in Vision 2020. He is hoping, and this is the view of my, our campaign, he's hoping to hoodwink this population and get in uh, uh, without a plan and a program. And I, I read in the papers this morning where he said that he's going to articulate his policies in, he has. in, 20, in, in, uh, in two weeks' time. Now, because I think they've launched and they adopted their campaign position, but continue with this article. Uh, he said that the government has changed its strategy and it's now setting out to brainwash the population. The prime minister is speaking about herself and what a wonderful prime minister she is and how democratic she is and how participatory uh, she is and so on. And they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on the re-education campaign in 
campaign in Trinidad and Tobago. You can't turn on the television without the government agents being in your face, he continued. I simply want to draw the population's attention that the parliament is not functioning. And, and I said, he has to decide whether the parliament, he wants parliament to function or he does not want it. And in addition, I, 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 is this a, a reaction to the fact that the prime minister is polling data by newspapers independent of us, but it supports what we do? The prime minister is immensely more accepted what? than him. And therefore, the question about distrust and, and, and those sorts of things are, 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 in my view, just words. Is that a strategy for 2015, Dr. What? Charles, making it between the Prime Minister and Dr. Rawlings? Is this more likable? We have, we have a five-point plan, and one of it speaks to the fact that this election is a choice between two leaders, two policies. Our, and in fact, as a developed country, if you go to the United States, and that's point one, a, a choice. If you go to the United States, you have the Republicans and the Democrats, whether it's immigration or whatever policies, everybody knows clearly what are the differences. In Trinidad, we have our policies. We see it, and uh, you can see, you said, you drive on the highways and you see it. You go to the new nursing hospital, you see it. You can drive to San Fernando. Uh, on, on my way to Port of Spain, I saw the, the children's hospital. So therefore, therefore, we have our policies. He has to come up with his policies. Give the, give the educated population of Trinidad a choice. I'm going to go through these policies because in Trinidad and Tobago, culturally, we don't vote on policy. In fact, if you ask the average man what's the position held by one party to the other, they cannot tell you the substantive difference. People have positioned the COP as a moral compass yes. and yet says that they've been unable to fulfill their I, mandate. I, I could disagree because when I was growing up, I used to hear my parents going to P&M conventions, real P&M family, and they would be talking about um, nationalism and, and independence, and they would talk about the commanding heights of the economies, perspectives for a new society. But somehow the PNM has lost its way. It used to be the party of ideas, and now it's the party of criticism and crying out loud for heaven's sake. Uh, Akash Samur standing by for the 6.30 News update. We just have to take a short break from this interview. Akash, I know that you were quite interested in hearing what uh, Dr. Charles had to say all morning. How are you? Hi, morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning, Himuram Kisuna. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. People don't vote on policy. They vote on likability. Well, the so whether I like you or not, how do you do. look? So, do you so look? I mean, always, always comes down, you know, the MPs and, and, and what people are vying for these constituencies. I mean, early pawns, it's, it's really the leaders versus each other. I mean, which, which person would you like to be the next prime minister and automatically the party they're associated with uh, becomes the government. So, but speaking of, uh, you know, the prime minister meets with... Uh, the THA chief secretary, uh, that meeting is to take place around 1.30 today. Uh, it, it's a meeting that uh, Mr. London has been asking for for quite some time, to the point where last week he, he seemed to get a bit uh, fed up of waiting, and he was saying that it uh, bordered on illegality, according to the THA Act, but it refused to meet him for, for, for so long. I think um, self-governance will be one of the... Uh, issues they will be discussing. I know Tobago security, I know uh, the Ebola, everything yeah. uh, in one will be discussed today. Also, Hima, I don't know if you remember this story. I, know I tried to find this in the newspapers. I couldn't find it. It was something that was uh, talked about on a platform uh, with regard to a female student uh, from a school in San Fernando. About the Mahindi, right? Right. Yeah, I remember being the story. Being on part entry. I understand this morning that same student will be going back to school but she will be accompanied by some uh, members of the NCIC and some other mm. uh, people with um, a background in Indian culture. And uh, I understand they're going to see if she'll be barred again from, from entering the school. I know our cameraman in South, um, Mr. Ivan Tulsi, says he will be there. So we're going to... You know, it's funny it, that I... It's something that, that happens, I mean, since I was yeah. in a but in Mahindi is not school. a Hindu thing nor is it an Indian thing right no but just, prevalent just throughout the entire Indian Middle Eastern schools and whatnot and yeah. what they accept to be uh, re religious uh, yeah. adornments and what they think is just a student pushing the boundary to make a fashion statement and it, it's it's really an, uh, it, it comes down to a fight between the different school boards different yeah. religions that they would allow this but they won't allow that I remember a time when I was, uh, I think when I was going to school, there was a story about a girl with a cross of hair in here, And she was uh, barred from going to school as well because uh, of her uh, dreadlocks. So 
Well, yes. since then, we've had the Equal Opportunities Commission, and the Equal Opportunities Act well. has also been, uh, well, I, I don't know the status of the commission in terms of what's his position here, but we've had that. And uh, Lynette Brown's suite, I think, is an excellent choice uh, for chairmanship. We have to take a very short break, and when we come back, we'll continue our interview with Rodney Charles, the man charged with responsibility of ensuring that you get the government's message. Are you understanding what the government stands for? Stay with us. What you told me, swear you did not say a word. Now go leave your mark upon the world. If there was one thing that you can take from this, just know when there's nothing more to say, just let your life take it from here. Take it from here. Dig into the deliciously sophisticated taste of Wendy's with our new smoked Gouda chicken, layered with flavors of caramelized onion sauce and Dijon aioli, all atop a buttery brioche bun. It's time to bring your taste buds to attention with our new smoked Gouda on brioche. Something so Gouda is only around for a limited time. So try one today. Wendy's, now that's better. Available at all locations nationwide. Diwali Tile Sale at Tile Expression. 12 by 12, 395. 17 by 17, 795. 18 by 18, 895. Porcelain tiles, 24 by 24, 2795. Thin set special, 3795. Tile Expression, Monroe Road, Canupia, near the mosque, the number one leader in tiles. wonderful time of the year by having your Christmas party catered by TNT's number one choice, Superb Caterers. At Superb, we are dedicated to excellence in food quality, preparation, and presentation. We cater for any function, both small and large. So call us today at 653-1896. Superb Caterers, providing high quality and a tasty food with excellent service for over 20 years. Sanjeevani for Life introduces Neurofactor Plus, an all-natural treatment for the entire central nervous system. Neurofactor Plus is used to treat Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, insomnia, neuropathy, high blood pressure, stroke, depression, stress, chronic body pains, and much more. Visit them at 441 Old Southern Main Road, Chase Village, Chaguanas, or call 665-5433. Sanjeevani for Life Ayurvedic and Body Care Clinic. Your health is your wealth. Welcome back to Dad and Tobago. Human Ramp Scene. We're continuing our conversation with Rodney Charles, the man to take the UNC, or hoping to take the UNC's message to or transform it into a successful campaign for 2015. And success will be measured by their ability to regain power in this country. Now, 
looking at the policy positions, but I do want to ask about an article that was published in the Express newspaper. There was a whole uh, long expose. Now, I may have my own views because I'm a management student about the content of the ad, uh, but the advertising uh, agency and also the ad, the Kublau, I think that was, they believe that that ad is aligned to the government and the government's position, and that has always been to attack and personalize uh, criticism. Well, I can assure you from the campaign that I, as campaign manager, I know nothing about that ad. I, I know discussions, and I have, in fact, I have not seen the ad as yet. I've read about it. Um, as, they, as things begin to look good for our party, and, and, and there's an evolving view that we are going to win the election, you can sense a panic on the other side. Um, a number of people, a number of NGOs are coming on board, and, and you see it a lot on Facebook. We have no control over that, at least the campaign does not have control. Um, in terms of our, our, our... Is the government endorsing this group? The government is not endorsing them. Have you funded this uh, campaign? We have, have you not funded this it, group? as far as I'm aware. Uh, we are take directives on the political leader. The political leader's position is that he has a right to, to, to demonstrate and articulate his views. That's, that's part of our democracy. It's entrenched in the Constitution, freedom of association, freedom of thought, and whatnot. Uh, but she said, we disagree with his modus operandi. We think he could, there are other avenues available to him to articulate his position. I'm guided by the political leader, and that's the position, I think, of the government also. Just understanding, and I hear you saying, I'm responsible for the government's message. The government, I reiterate, <laughs> is run by the Minister Barrett. Minister Barrett yeah. And the campaign, I'm responsible for the campaign. But, and you know, if you... Obviously, uh, elections will be next year. There's yes. uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The latest being September, the earliest being around May. Um, not a very long time. You are now faced with the fact that there's a man who's on a hunger strike. There's also a number of activists. Uh, the Attorney General, I think, wrote a letter. I see Douglas Mendes responded to that letter. Uh, everyone is now weighing in. The noise that exists in this space for you to get your message out, obviously, competing messages. No, it's not, actually. Uh, uh, as you said, as people drive on the roads and they access the hospitals, we have extended our, um, um, hours for uh, 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 health facilities and, uh, and a number of things. You know, I, I talked about um, a tertiary education, a number of developments taking place there in agriculture, etc. Uh, those are the things that speak about the government's level of performance. And I think most people, in and I come from South Ema, and I'll tell you that I had to get up half past three this morning to be here for six. And I empathize with those from Point, for example. And our Prime Minister is committed to the views of the people. She may think, as a, as a human being, that, um, and I em empathize with him significant, but she has, as, a, as, as the leader of a country, she has to govern in the interests of all. It is interesting that the parents of the, of, of the twins from St. Benedict's College, who um, got uh, national scholarships, mm -hmm. the parents both said and endorsed <coughs> the highway. Uh, the, the, girl, the, the two students from Cedrus endorsed the highway. Could you, could you think about someone who is ill in Cedrus trying to access hospital care if, if it is not available in Point Fourteen in San Fernando, Dr. in that traffic? Let me read to you what Dr. Rowley said mm -hmm. yesterday. Rowley also shared his views on the ongoing hunger strike of environmentalist Dr. Wayne Kublal Singh, describing it as a comedy tragedy. Rowley said the feud will be at the cost of taxpayers. He said when the members of the government were in opposition, they took objection to development projects. Today we look in amazement at the government spokespersons paying money to tell the population what wonderful benefits would come to the people of the area with the passage of this highway. You notice in all of that, he has not articulated whether he supports the highway or not. It's clear, obfuscatory obfuscatory di uh, digressions and distractions without a clear cut is the PNM in support of the highway bearing in mind that they uh, developed the highway they did the, 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 the all the, the, the pre-qualification work they invited contracts they uh, selected the, the, the OAS as the as the contractor and now they are in a quandary do they support or do they not support in fact what 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 um, um, Dr. Kubla, Kubla Singh is doing is his, his, his entitlement as a citizen. We stand for that. I, we may disagree with what he says, but we'll defend to the, to the death his right to say it. We come from a tradition of, 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 of re spiritual development, whether it's Hinduism, Christianity, or Islam. All of these religions. I come from the Christian religion that speaks about the body being a temple 
of, 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 of the person. And I have a responsibility to care for it. That is my God-given spiritual obligation. What is the PNM's position? Do they support him or do they not support him? Come no. clear, let us know so the country has a choice. The position adopted by your Prime Minister people say was very hard and fast. And if this man does die on your government's watch, what do you think is going to happen it in the campaign 2015? Of my Charles? Prime Minister's position is not hard and fast. As a leader, I, I, I sense the agonizing between her, her, her humanity and her duty as a leader of the country. She has to think about the person who will die in front point 14 and see just trying to access healthcare in San Fernando. She has to think about the students who sit in for hours, two hours a day, going to San Fernando, two hours a day, about four hours a day. Four hours a day, five, five days a week, five, four, that's 20, that's two and a half or a quarter days in traffic. And those students from point 14, from Benedict's College and the, 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 the students of Cedar must be congratulated. If they were on an equal footing with those from San Fernando, and I'm from San Fernando, what well, heaven knows what they would have done. She and, and our party has to think about the greater good of the common weal. That is the motto. If she gives in, and if she gives in to, to fasting, it, what it means that all our policies in future will be held hostage to anybody who decides to fast for any policy that he decides important. In other words, the question of governance it speaks to the, the, the supremacy of the parliament. It speaks to the supremacy. We, we either have to decide are we a country of laws or are we a country of, 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 of whatever. I prefer, I prefer to be a country, uh, to, to belong to a country, and I'll encourage a country of laws. The concerns expressed by the highway rap movement include corruption, procurement. Government, governance. They look at environmental issues. Now, a lot of things have been raised since uh, this issue has started. That, and I also see the JCC and the Invaders Bay project. Are you? I I, 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 I could read from Peter O'Connor's article, and I know why he uh, has adopted that position. I, I see it. He was born in Vesini. Mm -hmm. We understand what 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 lack of PNM development in rural areas mean. Um, and he says that the, the, the issue keeps changing. It started off with housing. And then it morphed into it morphed into a number of issues. And 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 and, and uh, <laughs> do you forgive me? Um, the only place the route between Mondesir and Debe does not pass through the swamp, as previously claimed. The only place where mangrove is being destroyed is along the Mus Mosquito Creek stretch, which is not in dispute. No mountain is being removed from the northern range to fill the swamp. So the issues keep changing, and if you deal with one. T tomorrow there's another one. And if you deal with these two, there's a third one, as has happened historically. And ah. we have to decide. Hema, Trinidad and Tobago is a fractious country to govern. We, do you wish that the parliament, if, you, if you're the leader of this country and you have to make laws, you have to first um, engage the NGOs, then you pass it in parliament, and then you go to the people who, various people who have passed on every issue and say, do we have clearance from you to, 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 to do build a hospital or whatnot? And I thought that, and I... I but I, maybe they think there wasn't enough consultation. Maybe they think that they, they were not included. Now, mind you, I know that uh, this matter has been since 2006, because I actually read the judgment, and the actual issue in court, uh, the Highway Rural Movement, they're determining the right for property. It's not environmental. So I think it, it a lot started, of people... It started off as a property issue. It's not that is, into an environmental Well, that is issue. On, on a public domain, but the actual matter in court is a property issue. And, and the court, right, and the courts have ruled in, in favor of, of continuation of the work. So that it is, is a, do I, if I am a citizen and I decide tomorrow that um, I, my rights have been infringed because I am from South and I have to travel six hours, to spend six hours in traffic every day to head to Port of Spain. I, I, and I fast for that. What did the government do? And, and, and so every issue will become subject to hostage to Anybody who decides to fast, we cannot do that. We have to decide what kind of country. Do you think do we your want. government will be judged if this man dies? I, do, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think citizens. You think be I think we underestimate. We underestimate the intelligence of the Trinidad and Tobago citizens. This is a this is a highly educated population. They think through issues. I, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's for, and I don't want to bash the media and whatnot, it's, it's, it's made for media to, to highlight what he's doing. But I think on reflection, if you talk to anybody from South Trinidad, San Fernando, I worked for a year in Point 14, and it was a tragedy every day 
Every day you will be lost four hour, hours of manpower. You went to work tired because you had to go through the creek and a set of circuitous roads that I do not think uh, if you reside entirely in, in, in the port of Spain that you'll have a sense of what we suffer. And in fact, this morning, I'm telling you, I got up half past three but to Dr. be here Carl, for six. You are there to, to sell the message in 2015. You must admit that this government has made a number of serious missteps, uh, which it campaigned against when, com when coming into power. The question, Nima, is about the future. Election? But if we look uh, at the past we, as a prediction, no, or we no, look at no. the past to create our uh, projections for the future, not. what will absolutely we look at? Absolutely not. If, if you want to be realistic and fair, the elections were called by man and caught everybody off guard to put together a, 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 a coalition and be governed to the, and give the Prime Minister credit. She held together a, a, a coalition of people, the first time in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. She, in this next five years, and this is our campaign, she will de 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 tell us about her legacy in terms of governance, people-centered development, development that recognizes all of Trinidad and Tobago and what not Port of Spain. Okay, I have, we have two minutes. What is, what is the meaning of people-centered? It sounds very fancy it and that, it sounds very catchy. It means, it means that every decision is rooted in the interest of the people. You consult with the people. You discuss with the people. You inform the same thing you're talking about, the government spending money and whatnot. It is a different kind of leadership. You don't talk down to the people. So that vision, when I would like to see in two weeks what they come up with, I could assure you it's going to be zero in health, zero in education. But if by chance they surprise us and come up with some policy, it is not going to be on the basis of a consultative process. Is your government consultative? Of course it is. My Prime Minister listens. If anything, she's been accused of listening too much. Why don't you fire this one? Fire Anna Robinson and whatnot. And she was thinking, weighing, analyzing, talking to. It's the same thing with, with Dr. Kublai Singh. She's, she's agonizing, she visited him, she talked to him, she asked the um, interreligious organization to talk to him and whatnot. So one does not see a government by VAPs. My final question to you, you know, I've heard the PR of the PNM use a statement about the quantity of money spent under this administration uh, compared to successive administrations. He is and what is it being spent on? Does he understand the current value? You did your MBA, the current value of money? That 60 billion today is 20 billion 10 years ago. The PNM has been, has been the, the great disaster of Trinidad and Tobago. Every time we had a boom, they have been in governance. So they begin, the last boom that we had when price, oil prices were $140 a barrel, $140, and today it's 83. It is. Yeah, 140. They, they, they spent the money on buildings and structures and, and, and did not deal with health. So we have to confront it. Didn't deal with education. They kept the school closed, Bish. And Wednesday, I'm going to Bish to, to talk to the, to the people of that community. And they will tell you about people-centered development, where they do not have to go to Sandy Grandi or Rio Claro to access education. The unions are holding this. And there's a perception that the unions are holding this country to ransom. You talk about a government consultation. Errol McLeod is a former union man. He sits in your, your cabinet. How are you going to get? He is a hero, and the country owes um, Minister the union leaders Errol see him as, McLeod, a, as a betrayal. Uh, Errol McLeod, and on, he settled 70 wage negotiations that were left undone by the previous PNM administration. He, w and, and really, uh, Butler in his last days, there was an interview that I saw that Butler spoke about a, 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 a harmony between labor and capital. I do not think, I do not think that the rabble-rousing days of trade unionism um, are, are, are what we need at this stage. And in Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew speaks about he had to deal with But that. they work ethic in Singapore. We talk about the Asian Tigers, but their history is well also yes, is known as but, well. But, but the trade unions understand that they have a role to protect the workers. Yes, but they also have a greater role to assist in the development of the country. This is a question. I know that uh, somebody has always said this, and I, I don't understand because I think it's public knowledge that the highway route movement has made it absolutely clear that they are opposed to the debate to Mondesir uh, section. So I don't know if I've made that clear as well. Uh, but they're saying that they're not opposed to the entire highway, and there's just that section. Yeah, but if, as I said, if I, co I quote the gentleman, it, 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 the, that, that section does not interfere either with the wetlands or with the, um, the archaeological site. There's a lot of misinformation. And this is the problem. And the media has a responsibility to clear up 
Because as the fourth estate, you give us facts in for which we make informed decisions. If we, if we continue to say things like it is affecting the archaeological site, if we continue to say that it affects the wetlands, when it is not, if I take O'Connor's and he has a, an interest and he's, he's following that issue more than I do, well, Peter O'Connor is an environmental conservatist, and he's also attached to the Issa Wright Nature Center, which is a world-renowned, also attached to the New York Zoological Society. That's just some history yeah, of the years. But do you, you understand that one has to balance the environmental concerns with the requirements of development. And, 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 and if, if we take it, the, the Churchill Roosevelt Highway was built along agriculture, and the best agricultural land in Trinidad is Balsai and in Barataria. The, highway, the thing to, to Maracas Bay was cut through mountains. Think about if we had a, 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 a Dr. Kublal Singh today. Would but it's we about, have, would it's we about have, balance. Think, no one is saying, you know, I, I think there's a lot I of misinformation mm -hmm. because if you look at the court judgment and also the restrictions of a CC, and I keep encouraging people, all of the documents to get a CC, all of it must be made public. All of this is also available in the courts. Go on the websites, educate yourself because there's a lot of misinformation. The actual matter that's being determined by the courts of Trinidad is because not an environmental oh, issue. It's an issue of property and property. the right to own property. Mm -hmm. So please, get the information. Uh, but looking at the fact that you talk about balancing the needs, they believe that the needs are not being balanced, that the of cost course. in the long term is simply of too course. much. And the question is, their needs have to be taken on board, of course. But you also have to take the needs of the 300,000 people who live in that area. You have to take in the 100,000 patients who are accessing. The, the 50,000 students. And I'm, I'm just saying, if, if you are a leader and you, 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 you have these balance of issues and choices to make, I, 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 I think the Prime Minister has made the correct decision to, to, to side with the greater good for the greater number. Actually, that's John Stuart Mills. Put, the greater good for the greater number. Now, Frank, I got your email, and I, I think it's public knowledge that the HRM is not opposed to, to the entire highway. They keep saying it's a Mondesir to Debe section of the highway. Um, but what uh, Dr. Charles is highlighting, and also the Peter O'Connor article, uh, they're saying that even in that segment of the highway that the concerns raised are not or they are saying that it's not legitimate that's according to peter o'connor yeah. but also i'm encouraging people to get the documentation to get a cc and to get an eia see what's out there there are some concerns about the processes but it's a very stringent process and uh but what the highway Road movement is saying they want full disclosure so it's a lot of issues that are muddled in all of this and i, I think as a population we must get it out and understand what are the real issues your closing comments are Trinidad and tobago uh, first of all i'm not a doctor <laughs> I have my masters and I, I, it's something I have to do before. Closing comments is that there's going to be a choice in 2015 between two leaders, two policies. I plead with Trinidad and Tobago to understand that this is not a Mickey Mouse thing. You cannot have a government coming in without any clear idea and policies and hoping to operate by VAPs. We see that they intend to elect, uh, to bring on board a number of new faces. Good fellows. But why is the UNC boys? not done started their screening? Good. Are we expecting we, the same in, people? In the fullness of time, Hima. In the fullness of but time. But when are you going in to launch your campaign? We, if we have an election in 20... The campaign has been launched already. And but with the same with, faces. But let me just say, let me just say that, uh, going back to the question of the new faces they're bringing, their CVs are thin on governance and leadership. So here you have a leader with no policies. And here you have surrounded by, by interns, I would say. People who are learning on the job. And I'm saying Trinidad, if they... If by any misfortune they elect a PNM government, heaven help Trinidad. And but it comes back to uh, Mr. Charles. I look at the fact that uh, persons like myself, you like to see new faces. You want to see that a party. You want to join the party. Mm -hmm. uh, you I have be a no candidate. political. Uh, you want to be a candidate. We're not switching the interview you here. But, you, but you, the issue is, yeah. you want to see people. You know, it's funny that I listened to John Stewart one time, and uh, you know, at the Daily Show, and he was talking about the fact that when Barack Obama first came out, he looked at the man and thought. It's finally somebody that speaks my language I understand them the politicians if you come back with the same faces one your government has been criticized of having a cabinet that is too big of wasting taxpayers dollars and having faces that are not performing it, you have a it, few stars it, it, but you also but have a lot of dead it, weight it, it reflects the diversity of the country and it did, did reflect the diversity but we cannot of public to opinion it. as opposed to the PNM that had a, a if you look at it before the election of the uh, Shaguanas West candidate it was entirely of one ethnic group all look like me and I am saying that that, that, that party has at, uh, in, in its various re in incarnations has not done justice to Trinidad and Tobago. So what, when are you going to begin the screening for the... The screening is going to, the political leader is uh, consulting with the party, bear in mind our parties now, uh, 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 there's a, it's on a high, there's tremendous enthusiasm, 
in, in, in various constituencies, and we are like a duck. But are you, we are calm on top, but there's a lot of work going on below. A lot of work here. And that is why the polls reflect what I'm talking about. Believe me. When will we see the new candidate? You're going to see it in the fullness of time, Hima. And, and rest assured, come 2015, I want you to invite But are you me. not afraid that you're going to be, I mean, the PNM has no problem ex exposing their cards to the public. They have said, we have Stuart Young, we have Faris al Rawi, we have the retired brigadier. They're not in government. They have not articulated policies. So they have all the time to announce candidates. And if I were them, I would have spent more time ensuring that I had people of, 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 who, of who had the capacity and a track record to govern this fractured society. Do you think so, you have it? I think that come 2015, you're going to see Kamala Prasad Bissessa as the Prime Minister of country. Oh, we she has term limited her country, she has term limited herself, and that even that When we see new speaks, faces, are you, yes, get, you will. are you getting rid of, who are you getting rid of? Yeah, I, I, we're not getting rid of anybody. That decision has not yet been discussed. And I, th I have re been reading articles in the, in the press, and, and uh, PNM induced articles, we have not decided. We will decide in the fullness of time. We're going to go in with Akash Samaru, and I'll see you after the news. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Akash Samaru and this is your morning news here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa and the THA, THA Chief Secretary Orville London will meet this afternoon to discuss issues related to the governance of Tobago. The meeting comes on the request of Mr. London who told reporters last week that the approach of the Prime Minister could be considered illegal. Mr. London says he is heading into the meeting with mixed feelings because of the process that led to the meeting being held in the first place. He says he is heartened that the Prime Minister has finally agreed to meet with him, but says he is disheartened that it, that it took 15 months to get another meeting with Mrs. Pasan Bissessa. He says there are a lot of issues to discuss. Opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley has asked his party, the PNM, to consider major changes going forward with the belief that it will form the next government following general elections in 2015. He addressed the PNM's annual convention yesterday as they began deliberating on policies under a title Vision 2030. Among the issues discussed by Dr. Rowley was the state of crime. 335 murders so far this year. The real story is more than that. Because if you get shot on Monday and die on Friday, they're not counting that. But the bottom line is, Trinidad and Tobago has a serious problem of national security. And the criminal element has too much room to maneuver in Trinidad and Tobago. That is the number one priority of any government of Trinidad and Tobago. And the PLM commits to going on the job. Government expects to save over $600 million by refitting high schools that were earmarked for demolition. This was announced yesterday by Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopi Singh when he and Tertiary Education Minister Senator Fasal Karim toured schools in central Trinidad. Minister Karim joined Minister Gopi Singh at the Karapi Chima West Secondary School on the second leg of a school visit program to assess works to remove debris from the school environment in a bid to curb mosquito-borne diseases. I will use some of these um, existing schools now for having um, early um, special needs students dedicated for special needs and putting all the infrastructure so for them. So while we wait for March, April, we will do the, the uh, planning to begin to put the students across the country in about four or five of these schools, the special needs students. And officers from the Scarborough CID are still continuing investigations into the discovery of a decomposing body on Saturday afternoon. The discovery was made by police around 7 p.m. following a complaint of a bad smell from a resident in Top Hill Mason Hall. Police believe that the body is of a woman from the area who had been missing for some time now. However, this is yet to be confirmed because of the state of decomposition. And that was your 7 a.m. news on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. Let's now take a quick break and then join Hima Ramke soon on the morning. Break.
Welcome back. Well, we have one final question because, as you know, we went straight into the news. Um, Mr. Charles, I have to ask you about the crime problem, and that was uh, one of the major talking points yesterday at the PNM convention. This government, obviously, and you see the headlines continuing every single day, the front page of the Guardian newspaper and the Express highlights the fact that a brother was murdered. You know. And, is, and what are you going to say in 2015 on the campaign? We're saddened by any death. But the reality, Hema, is that when the PNM demitted office in 2010, the death rate was 500 plus. Dr. Keith Rowley, by his own admission on the clip that you just showed, said it's in the vicinity of 330 or 340 or some, uh, in, in the mid 300s. That is a significant improvement. For him to turn that into negative performance is indicative of the PNM's capacity to hoodwink the population. And furthermore, we await Dr. Rowley's crime plan. Well, they we presented one yesterday that they said well, it's going to... Tell me, tell me, what do you do? I, 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 I know their plan. The economists spoke about the blip, and they said that that was an expensive toy. They talk about OPVs that we, the, 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 the largest military naval power in the world cannot block drugs from going to the United States. Somehow expensive OPVs in Trinidad are going to stop, stop, stop drug lords from bringing in drugs into Trinidad today. We're going to put their policies on crime under clinical review, and we'll expose them. Because but what is your government going to say in 2015? You came in on a promise that you will solve the crime situation. Are, no, of course. The problem of crime is a, is a problem that uh, in, many, in, in many forms of the PNM policies. I could tell you that this, the, this senior, uh, the junior sex system where you had s uh, shift systems and whatnot created a generation that, has, that is now fathering. And uh, when the woman left to go to the United States and the barren well, children, the and children and all, all those problems that cannot be solved. And that is why we need two terms. And I assure you, we're down to 330. We're down to 330. If you give the Kamala Prasad Bicessa five more years, it will be down to 200. And that's what the PNM but don't want. Every time they come into power, they, they, the murder rate goes up. And that is a fact, Hema. They cannot deny it. When they are in power, it goes up. When we come, it goes down. If they win, and God forbid if they do, it is going to climb back up again because they have no policies. They operate by VAPs. Uh, that was the closing comments there from Rodney Charles, the man taking the message into the campaign 2015. We take a short break. When we come back, Mogish Bassley joins us on set as we look at what came out of the PNM's convention yesterday. Stay with us. The Digicel Value Party continues to deliver the best smartphone value with the Alcatel Pop C1 for only $2.99 prepaid when you purchase a 30-day 4G data plan. Plus, you get an additional month of data free. Vote for value. Vote Digicel. $690,000, which includes insurance, maintenance, warranty, and financing with our in-one package. Dig into the deliciously sophisticated taste of Wendy's with our new smoked Gouda chicken, layered with flavors of caramelized onion sauce and Dijon aioli, all atop a buttery brioche bun. It's time to bring your taste buds to attention with our new smoked Gouda on brioche. Something so Gouda is only around for a limited time. So try one today. Wendy's, now that's better. Available at all locations nationwide. Want a dress to thrill this Halloween? Then come on down to Party Central, where you'll find a wide variety of costumes for both adults and children. Select costumes from scary to sexy that'll make you scream. We also stock Halloween frocks for haunted houses and Halloween decorations. So fear not. Come on down to Party Central. Open Monday to Friday and a Saturday. Call us at 222-7781. It's the most wonderful time of the year again. It's always a good idea to shop early and save.
start the season with great savings at the annual Christmas in October sale at Jimmy Abu the Textile King. See our new arrivals on curtain panels from $50 to $200. New stylish fashion curtains inspired by Italian design. So come on in to Jimmy Abu the Christmas in October sale with no exceptions. Jimmy Abu the Textile King, corner of Queen and Henry Street, Port of Spain. Hi, I'm Shivana. When I heard the news from my school teacher, I was shocked beyond words. None of this would have been possible without God, my parents and family, all my hardworking teachers, and of course with the Guardian SCA practice test. I used that every Wednesday since I was in Standard 4 and made sure I checked the results on the Friday. Parents, I would encourage you strongly to get the Guardian SCA every Wednesday for your child and help them achieve their true potential. The SEA Practice Test, free in your Wednesday Guardian. Gary, when we get in the materials for the roof, you know we paying them boys and they just sit in there. Y'all, when I bought this, I paid 600 in transport and the hardware promised they could deliver in four days time. I just call them, now they say next week. Honey, I told you to go Varma. You can collect your goods on the same day or they will deliver the material free of charge the next day. Look. See? Why go back and get me money, eh? Yeah? Don't be like Gary. Keep your wife happy with Farmer's next day free delivery and high quality products. Welcome, Matron Dad and Chabega. Well, we're going to check in now uh, with a uh, story from our newscast, and this is from the PNM's convention, and we're going to begin our conversation with Mukesh Basto as we look at the political landscape 2014 going into 2015. Stay with us. Sunday's convention was for delegates only, held at the Hyatt Hotel instead of the traditional Shagaramas Convention Center. And you would have known of Vision 2020. It's been redeveloped into a new PNM policy called Vision 2030, with different elements for the party delegates to consider as they sat down for discussion. Among the things for consideration was crime, a matter Dr. Rowley addressed briefly in his opening remarks. 335 murders so far this year. The real story is more than that. Because if you get shot on Monday and die on Friday, they're not counting that. But the bottom line is, Trinidad and Tobago has a serious problem of national security. And the criminal element has too much room to maneuver in Trinidad and Tobago. That is the number one priority of any government of Trinidad and Tobago. And the PLM commits to going on the job. He's certain the party is winning the next general election and says the aim is to ensure that the country moves forward. And talking about moving forward, he also touched on the need for a mass transportation system. Is it solved by simply saying we want more cars, we have more cars, or we build more roads? How do you solve that problem? And that problem has not occurred in the last two or three years. It has been with us for a number of years. And we decided that this country may need a mass transportation system. One government decided to commit to it. Another government says, I want no part of it. But the problem remains. He says an inventory at PTSA shows 350 buses ready for use, 150 in active service, but all subject to the same traffic jams as everyone. Dr. Rowley also reaffirmed the decision to change the governance structure. We've said it before this gathering, that we will abolish the Ministry of Local Government and we will reorganize the delivery of goods and services at the local level by giving greater autonomy, greater responsibility and greater resources to the local government bodies. That is a commitment. He's committing to, to pursue a revenue authority for effective collection of government revenue. The next convention is in two weeks' time for the General Assembly, where Dr. Rowley says he will speak more about the road ahead. Samson Anton, CNT3, Port of Spain. The road ahead, crime, and looking at what came out of the PNM's convention yesterday. Now, the party's obviously shifting, uh, changing its modus operandi, changing the way things are done. And Dr. Rowley has brought a new style of leadership mm. to the PNM. No one can deny that. Well, those changes have actually started since 2010, and Dr. Rowley took over as leadership, um, amended the, the party's constitution, and uh, bringing in a new electoral system for electing um, the leader and also other persons. And now we see a, a shift away from what they call the traditional um, venue for 
these types of meat in the Sharamas Convention Center coming more into the Hyatt and Port yeah. of Spain. So there have been some, some sh shifts we can see with Dr. Rowley. Are they meaningful shifts in terms of enough to push this? Uh, obviously, we just said you heard parts of the interview mm -hmm. with uh, Rodney Charles. The man, obviously a very, I can understand why they have chosen him to be mm -hmm. campaign manager. Uh, he is a politician and he is charged with the responsibility of selling this message. Do you think that the PNM are able to sell their message as an alternative? Well, um, Dr. Rowley held his uh, meeting with the delegates, the party delegates yesterday. So he's going to outline his policy and then he's going to um, bring the policy in the next two weeks time when we have the general convention. So the general convention is basically going to have for the first time possibly the policy, Vision 2030, uh, what, the go what the PNM hope to actually deliver in the, the next five years. So that would be like it's a manifesto, if we think of it in this context. That what is going to take place in two weeks' time. The document is going to be, to be presented to the, to the, to the general um, population of the PNM. That is what will be their, their manifesto. Are we shifting enough as a nation uh, to be mature enough to vote on policies? If you look at the Dems and the Republicans, you know clearly uh, there are divisive issues in terms of immigration, uh, in terms of mm -hmm. their, their policies on inclusiveness, also their policies on protection uh, and their war on terrorism. You know where the distinct policies are uh, between both parties. When you think about the voters and voting behavior, um, there are various theories going to explain that there will be a segment of the voter bank that is going to vote party. They identify with the party no matter what they're going to shift. They're not going to shift away from the party. Then there are voters that is going to look at issues as you rightly identified. Taxes, where you look at the economy, look at crime, look at constitutional issues. Those things will now form the basis for persons to make up their mind and which party is going to basically deliver on these issues. So issue voting will occupy the attention of some of the voters. While I always say that there will be a, a segment of that voter bank that is going to support a political party, regardless of what happens. Now, looking at uh, the UNC, the PNM have already started ish, uh, kind of letting the public know their mm -hmm. candidates for 2015. The UNC have yet to do that. Well, the PNM has identified candidates for a number of constituencies, possibly held by the, the partnership and also those that are, let's say, vacant at the point mm -hmm. for um, Mr. Arnold Roberts' constituency. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are two constituencies that is really um, determined right now by certain members of parliament, as um, Dr. Keith Rowley, and I think Ms. Patricia McIntosh has indicated that she doesn't want to actually be, go up as a, as a candidate in the next election. But it is, it is correct for Dr. Rowley to be identified as a candidate because the constitution basically recognizes that whoever should be appointed a prime minister must be an elected member of the lower house and also the political leader. So in uh, this context, we've seen that the, the, it is in the correct approach that the PNM has taken with regard to selecting candidates. But the other constituencies that are currently held by members of parliament is yet to be decided. Now looking at the UNC, they're yet to start their screening process. Why do you think that is? Well, they would have to start their screening process. Again, it's the same reason will apply to the government. Uh, a lot of the, the members who currently sit in the parliament, are they going to put up their name back? For, for as a candidate for the for the well should they be accepted again let me be that's let us question, be real yeah. that's, I mean, that is also real you know i keep asking i ask you every week and uh looking at a number of missteps that she's having um, had a number of ministers who mm -hmm. had uh who no longer hold portfolios in her government uh, but in addition to that she has been criticized for having one of the largest cabinets mm -hmm. in the country and that i think that has come back uh, because of this sort of balance that they had to strike mm -hmm. with amongst the partners in the partnership right. but moving forward that that actual getting that balance and that's this inclusion that that cost her a lot a lot of people are saying that there's duplication that i don't understand what is the purpose of having a ministry of environment water resources land and whatever and housing i i just don't understand it well the context is as i said because of the size of the government itself the elect elected members and um, they all want to be part of the government they want to be a backbencher and that has become a major issue and going is one of the follows of coalition politics what is going to happen now is that she would have to indicate to the electorate that listen the prime minister the leader of the, the unc that the cabinet is going to be of this size maybe they follow the, mo the, the motion in the united states they have a fixed number of cabinet uh, departments and if you're going to create one you have to come to the legislature to actually create a new department maybe it's about time the the government the opposition sits down and says, let's agree on ministries so you have a certain number of ministries with a certain number of cabinet ministers, so that would be part of it. If you have junior ministers or parliamentary secretary, they can serve as assistant to the cabinet minister in that context. Maybe it's about time we come down and fix the, the jurisdiction of what you call cabinet. Now, this issue with the Kublau Singh ads, uh, there was a story in the Express mm -hmm. newspaper yesterday, and, this mo and the situation moving forward.
how do you really think? I, the, the government seems to now be a very dismissive. I see that uh, Dr. Suresh Ramachan on his Facebook, uh, he actually addressed this issue for mediation mm -hmm. because he is the Minister of Works and Infrastructure. And he says, mediate what? And he, um, I'm actually going to go through it a little later on the show. But uh, it do you think that, that it's a lost cause now? What do, you, do you really think that they will pay a price for this? Well, there will always be, there is a political price that could, could actually come about as a result of the death of um, Dr. Kubel Singh. But I'm reading today uh, in the newspapers that Dr. Kubel says that that is not one of his um, major concerns. So clearly, how are they going to fight the issue? Um, is it going to be in the in the courts? Is it going to be, is the Privy Council going to be the final arbitrator in this whole matter? But mediation it seems to be very difficult because, as I mentioned last week, that if you have both sides that are basically fixed on a specific position then how are you going to mediate to actually shift any of those positions? There seems to be no consensus as to what they call a middle ground on this matter. Well, Dr. Uh, Rambachan said that on his Facebook this morning. He was talking of the fact. Uh, but also I see that Douglas Mendez has mm -hmm. written, uh, he wrote a column uh, criticizing the AG for the AG's position mm -hmm. in this matter as well. Well, the AG's position will have to uh, enunciate what, call, what is the government legal position. He's a legal advisor to cabinet. He's, um, so therefore, his position will be an extension of what the government position is. So it, it comes back down to on a legal matter as against what you call on a humanitarian matter. Where do we stand on the matter? Is it human humanitarian? Is it Will what she call pay legal? a price for this at all? Because do you think that, they've, that they, the relevance of it has fizzled out? That the population now is questioning the HRM? Well, the, or the do political they think price, that the, the, the issues are legitimate? Where is the political price going to be paid? If it is that you have the east-west corridor, the central-south corridor. And if you have, the, the only way you can measure the impact of it is possibly in a general election. If a general election is held and the, PN, and the, the, the parties are lose a number of seats on the, on the south peninsula, then we can say it has, a, it has linked directly back to the, to the, to the Harry Rock movement. Or if we talk about the east-west corridor, if you ask persons on the ground on the corridors, you may find that one group of persons say the PNM is strong. What does it look like now? For 2015. Right now, I think it looks like now how I look at it on the ground basis is that both sides are even. They're basically facing off each other. And they, uh, Dr. Rodney Charles has said that it's between, do you think it's now come down between two leaders? That it's either I like Kamala Pasabi says, so I like Dr. Keith Rowley, it's who I like more? Between well, that's a, that was a strategy. That is the strategy of the government that's currently the campaign strategy is to focus on the prime. It will come down to of the two, which is the best leader to lead the country in 2015? Yeah, but a leader is only as good as, a, as, as, as their a team. team. Right. So do you think, out of the teams that are emerging, do you think that the teams can stand the scrutiny? Well, the, the, the teams will be under scrutiny in the next um, But can they months. stand it? Would it be the type of teams that excite you? I mean, there are certain teams that come out. To, let me give you a football mm -hmm. analogy. You know, Akash is excited by Manchester United. But if you see a real football team like Real Madrid, <laughs> everybody gets excited. Right, but at the end of the day, what you're going to find is that once these candidates come forth, you're going to have to actually question their ability whether they can be leaders in their own in their own space. Can they really be leaders in their own space? Ten seconds closing comments from Nancy. Well, it's very interesting to see that the crime has um, some, has not beaten as yet. So I'd like to see some maybe positive work towards that issue of crime. Looking at the issue of crime, we take a very short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. This is the morning blue. Stay with us. Okay, so I've got you upgraded to your DVR. What's a DVR? It's a direct TV magic box for around the same price as a regular cable TV. <laughs> it's not a magic box, it's your direct TV DVR, but it really does do some pretty cool stuff. With your DVR, you can pause and rewind live TV, record up to 100 hours of programming, and then watch it when you want and fast forward the ads. Magic! Sign up for direct TV today and watch TV on your terms. Direct TV, life changing. The real magic will be getting him to move. 
Lactogen Junior is the only growing up milk with a unique combination of the probiotic l comfortis which helps to support a healthy digestive system and may reduce tummy upsets like constipation and vitamins and minerals to support healthy growth. Try Lactogen Junior growing up milk today, specially suited for healthy children 12 to 36 months. Lactogen Junior, digestive comfort that shows. <laughs> Wonder World, when Arrow Post it, everything you need, just Arrow Post it. Arrow Post it. Arrow Post it. Arrow Post. Online shopping made easy. Chic Leisure Limited, leading manufacturers of vermicelli, split peas powder, greaseproof paper, manufacturers of a variety of paper and plastic bags, bags for french fries, sandwiches, popcorn, supermarket stores and more. Whatever your needs, trust to Chic Leisure Limited for quality products. Faith Community Church presents Prophetic Convention 2014, featuring Prophets Dennis Kramer and Jefferson Edwards, with host pastors Farouk and Saadi Mohammed, from the 3rd to the 7th November, 7 p.m. nightly. For more information, call 653-1587. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost. Are you looking for an innovative way to control and monitor your glucose levels? Join the hundreds of people who have switched to the Code-Free Blood Glucose Monitoring System. Code-Free makes it easy to analyze before and after meal glucose results. It has no coding, making it simple to use. 500 test memory with date and time, a 5-second fast test time with only a small blood sample volume needed. And don't even worry about the strips. Code-Free strips are among the most affordable and advanced on the market. Try Code-Free today by trading in your old glucose machine and get 50% off every code-free machine. Available at Pennywise and all leading pharmacies. Try the new Vitamult Plus with acai for mental sharpness. Garana for physical energy. And aloe vera for a stronger immune system. Vitamult takes care of you. Uh, welcome back to Rundam and Tobago. Another hunger strike began yesterday, but this time it has nothing to do with the controversial Monday zero to day based segment of the highway. Uh, the managing director of Na National Nation Communities Revitalization Limited, Peter Hercules, embarked on a hunger strike to convince the government to launch a cleanup campaign against chikungunya and uh, the dengue virus. Mr. Hercules, good morning. How are you? Very well. Yeah. So you started a hunger strike? Yes. So promote what exactly? First of all, unity. Everything here is about politics and forgetting the real issue, which, which is the people. And we must come to that understanding that we are here to serve the people, not to leave them out to draw. Now, your hunger strike, Dr. Wayne Kublal Singh is on a hunger strike of 41 days now. What was your hunger strike? My hunger Did you not eat anything at all for what period of time? Yes. Well, I started my, um, the dry fast, I call it, mm -hmm. um, starting Friday. And it is going to go through here for the rest of the, the week. So you're doing a one-week fast? Yes. Now, you're highlighting the reason for your fast. Uh, you want to start a cleanup campaign. The government is going to say that they're doing the enough cleanup and that the, the Ministry of Local Government and the regional bodies are, in fact, engaged in a cleanup campaign. Everything is based upon money here in this country. If someone don't pay someone to do something, again, it is going to be just that. What I would say here is this. The cleanup campaign that we are talking about is to clean up each home go to each individual home this is too a critical um situation or period in our life that we should just leave leave alone or just deal with it just as anything else we must understand that these are lives that we're talking about yes you can send out all the ads and what have you out there to tell people what they need to do but it's time for us to begin knocking on the doors this is the dengue and chikungunya virus we're talking about the ebola if you're not faithful in li little things how could you be faithful in big things if the local government don't get money to go and do the job, what happened is this, is that they don't do anything. No one cares anything about a small man. No one cares anything about the people who are not voting for them. They will take care of the people within their arena, so to speak. I am saying here 
that we need to address each and every citizen, each and every individual. Our, our campaign that we're talking about is to knock on every door, make sure the back of the home is clean, 50 feet in front to 100 feet And you're hoping who does this? You're, wanting, you're hoping the we, government does no, this? No, and this is, this is another thing about Trinidadian. We wait on the government to do everything. We as a citizen have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to go and do this job also. This, is a, this might be an epidemic coming here to destroy this country, and we are worried about politics. The citizens are worried about the government. So you're hoping this. that people take responsibility for their environment? What, is we are, what this campaign is about? What we are saying is this, is that we set the date uh, every weekend for each, for each county. And if we have volunteers coming down to each county, we can take care of this. We, can, we all can put our hands together. The garbage that is here is not created by the government, you know. It's by each individual who don't care anything about this country. So even though you cleaned it up today, tomorrow you have to go back and clean so again. So I'm asking you the point of this campaign. You want who to clean it up? You want people to take their responsibility? Yes, for their first homes? we'll do a voluntary cleanup in each county across mm -hmm. the country, making sure each home meets that standard. Have the, have the health department um, um, solidify that part of it as we move forward in, in, in making a better place. This is what we need today in each county across Trinidad and Now, Florida. after you finish this one week fast, what are you hoping to achieve? What's going to be the next step? Next step is action. We plan to, we plan to, if we have gotten no response from anyone, as I have reached out to the Prime Minister, the President, and even the spiritual leaders, which is a great part in our community. They are spiritual leaders, but what they, what they are doing, nothing. They are sitting waiting for the government to do it. I am saying to the spiritual leaders and the people in the community, please go to your regula religious leaders, let them know who needs the help. We'll be more than happy to come and clean up the place for them. And secondly, we do have a plan. It's a two-pronged plan. First is to first clean it up. The second, pr the second plan is a 12-month process whereby we, will, we, we maintain the process of that cleanup. Your closing comments, Trindan Speg, what would you like them to know about this and why should they be interested in it? I want you to know that I am here to fight for you. I'm not here about politics. I'm not here about, uh, about playing games. I'm here about solution, and I'm here to stand up for you and make sure your life and your home and your children have a place, a clean and safe place to live in. A clean and safe place to live in. A uh, special good morning to Francis Joseph. Francis, good morning, and thank you for always tuning in. Uh, we take a very short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. This is The Morning Brew. your trendsetter for home decor. Come and see our selection of striking accent furniture, a stunning assortment of outdoor furnishings, an exquisite range of kitchen items at Homeland Furnishings. All your bedroom and bathroom needs are met. The kids will be amazed. Stylish and interesting bars and accessories, plus fabric land, storage land, and array of rugs and more. Homeland Furnishings for the trendiest selection of home furnishings and accessories, located at Fiocco Plaza. Sanjeevani for Life introduces Neurofactor Plus, an all-natural treatment for the entire central nervous system. Neurofactor Plus is used to treat Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, insomnia, neuropathy, high blood pressure, stroke, depression, stress, chronic body pains, and much more. 
Visit them at 441 Old Southern Main Road, Chase Village, Chaguanas, or call 665-5433. Sanjeevani for Life Ayurvedic and Body Care Clinic. Your health is your wealth. The Digicel Value Party continues to deliver the best smartphone value with the Alcatel Pop C1 for only $2.99 prepaid when you purchase a 30-day 4G data plan. Plus, you get an additional month of data free. Vote for value. Vote Digicel. Refineries that are located relatively close to the source of crude can access this crude at prices lower than market prices. Petrotrin currently operates in a global oil market which is experiencing an oversupply of refining capacity. What we find as a result of this, refinery margins, that is the difference between the price of the products that we sell from the refinery and the cost of the crude that we run through the refinery is low. Over the last four years, U.S. crude production has grown tremendously, largely driven by the advances in shale oil and shale oil production. And refineries who are located fairly close to those sources of crude are able to access crude at discounted prices, and they run those refineries flat out, producing products that can be exported and see oil market prices and therefore enjoy a healthy margin as well. Even though Petrotrin has experienced low margins, there are various ways to reduce continued exposure. We must find more oil, we must produce more oil as a company and run greater volumes of produced oil, our own produced oil through the refinery. As part of our strategic and tactical plans, Petrotrin aims to increase refinery efficiency and lower the cost of operations. Additionally, we will be looking to where and how we sell our products by trying to get more premium markets, more markets where we get a better price because we have a logistical advantage or we can offer a better quality of service to some of the customers. These initiatives will help stem the effects of the low refinery margin environment and ensure Petrotrin's sustainability well into the future. So Bagel, joining us on set, we have Dr. Faisal Daniel and Dr. Marissa Nimrod, and we're talking get fit, get fit at 50. Well, that's a little tongue tied <laughs> there. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. good morning. Thank you. Now, it's the fourth oncology uh, conference, and this year you've chosen the, the theme get fit at 50. Now, Dr. let's start with you. Why are we doing this? Um, so, pretty much the Trinidad and Tobago Medical Association has been having annual conferences. Uh, this year we're focusing on colorectal cancer, which is probably unknown to a lot of persons in general population. So we decided that we would actually partner with a few other uh, interest groups and physicians, and um, that would be the focus to create a general awareness uh, for one, and two, to get a national consensus on colorectal screening in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, Dr. Edo, I have to ask you, I, I, Dr. Stanley, I didn't, when you mentioned that this type of cancer, I thought, well, yes. I, I don't know anything about it. Let's talk a little bit about what it is. Well, colorectal cancer, the colon is the large bowel. Mm. The small bowel having the digested food em empties into the large bowel, which is like a sac. And the colon is actually a muscu muscular tube, which begins in the appendix area, goes up to the liver, comes across here, down into the rectum and out. How prevalent is colon cancer in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, it is estimated by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is a UN group, Global Can, based on local cancer statistics, that by 2015, one person a day will be diagnosed in Trinidad and Tobago with colorectal cancer. And it's um, and what what fuels that 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 development is the way we live. Um, we spoke about development earlier. Trinidad is a developing country, and developing countries, first world countries, have a particular cancer profile. And that includes breast cancer, prostate cancer, cancer of the colon, and cancer of the lung. Colorectal cancer is now the number one cancer that affects both men and women locally, more so men than women. 
Really? Yes. And it is. so this is about raising awareness yes, and in is. terms of screening. So do you find the way that we have uh, for women with breast cancer and getting screening and getting tested, is it the same sort of message that you would have? Well, yes. And the thing is, we know locally that many women get screened for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Many men get screened for prostate cancer. And that tells us that Trinidad and Tobago is, the people of Trinidad and Tobago will be willing to get screened for colorectal cancer once they are aware and once they know that it is available. Now, looking at the event that you're having as well, uh, you have the advances, also uh, management issues, and there's a workshop that's taking place as well. Correct. So the workshop that we're having is actually going to be held at the Hyatt on the 2nd of November. Um, it's ideally targeted towards physicians uh, because the uh, medical association our aim pretty much is to teach and to have continuing medical education for physicians to keep their practice up to standards. So it's going to be held at the Hyatt. Um, those are the topics. Dr. Daniel is actually one of our presenters. Um, and we have uh, two others who will also be educating physicians in particular. So uh, we're hoping that that would actually start the ball rolling towards actually creating this awareness. Now, Dr. Anna, I see that you're talking about policy in the making. Is it that you are hoping to uh, uh, sort of uh, coerce the government into adopting a position on this? Well, not a matter of coercion. Um, the thing is, we're working on what we call a brown paper. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's largely collaborative at this stage. We're getting um, feedback from a lot of different specialty groups, different interest groups, stakeholders, as you would call it. And we are distilling it. And we want to produce a white paper where we can tell the government that going forward, this is what we need to do. As it is, Trent Tobago has a population of about 290,000 people between the ages of 50 and 70. And this is, the, this is the target group that we're aiming to get screened for colorectal cancer. And uh, your closing comments as we wrap this interview. Now, the event that is taking place on the 2nd of November, is it free to the public? Is it open to the public? Or are you simply targeting medical personnel? Um, ideally, we're targeting medical personnel, doctors, nurses. Um, the registration fee, they can actually call Trinidad and Tobago Medical Association to get more information on it. Um, and the other thing, too, was actually for Dr. Daniel to tell you what fit meant at yes. 50. Uh, you know, when I looked at it, I thought it was very yes. cute. Fit at 50. Yes. Why are we fit, promoting this campaign? Fit is the fecal immunochemical test. <laughs> we are testing the stool for blood. Why? Because cancers bleed. Okay. And it'll bleed, and you won't know, you won't feel a thing, and it's bleeding. Okay. And that will be the earliest opportunity to be screened, and that test can cost less than $200. To screen the entire population between that target age group can probably cost less than $2 million a year. And we have the local infrastructure through our health centers and physicians throughout the country. All the labs already have the test, so we know that it can be done. And it should be done because it will make a difference over the next generation or two. Looking at the positions adopted and the advice given here, and I know that we will invite our doctors back on set, uh, you know, to further explore uh, this topic a little more. But uh, go check it out. It's November second. All of the information is on the screen. We take a very short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. This is the morning brew. Stay with us. At Value Optical, you can get eyeglasses for eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. And designer frames at 25% off. Give your eyes style at the best price. You can even get digital HD lenses the next day. Advanced technology in quick time. With service that's focused on you, isn't it time you made your eyes happy? Call 800-2020 to schedule an appointment today. Value Optical. Caring for your eyes. Attention all caterers, wholesalers, and retailers. Beaver Distributors Limited introduces our brand new Styrofoam products. Low prices on our superior brand personal care items, cleaning products, paper products, and our wholesale sizes of food items. Come in today at Beaver Distributors Limited. Superior quality at superior low prices. Numerous publications and experts confirm that inflammation is the root cause of illness and disease. Get rid of your pain with Omega XL, the all-natural anti-inflammatory that has more Omega-3s than any product you can find in Trinidad and Tobago, except no substitutes. Over 25 years of clinical studies have proven Omega XL has far greater benefits than any fish oil at putting an end to your pain once and for all. Beware of the imposters claiming to offer the most powdered milligrams of Omega-3s per bottle, which may contain dangerous fillers. Don't be fooled by fast-talking pitchmen that do not have the clinical studies to back up their claims. Omega XL is fully supported by actual physicians, not just pharmacists. There is no powdered product on the shelves today that can compete with Omega XL's more than 30 complex free-form fatty acids for fighting and putting an end to your neck, 
back, asthma, and arthritis pain caused by heart disease, diabetes, and so much more. Omega XL is a -a one-of-a-kind, powerful anti-inflammatory that is second to none when it comes to defeating your chronic inflammatory pain. Finally, put an end to your pain once and for all. Accept no substitutes. Take control of your pain by getting your Omega XL today. Visit your local pharmacy or health food stores to get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Omega XL is in no way affiliated with the Sure Cure product in Trinidad and Tobago. OGTT 2014 heralds in a new era in technological advancements in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. This three-day expo conference and debate presents an array of opportunities for forging alliances amongst local and foreign companies. From the 29th to the 31st October 2014 at the Center of Excellence, OGTT 2014 features local and internationally renowned exhibitors and speakers relative to the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry. Register to become an exhibitor or attend at no cost. Sanjivani for Life introduces Neurofactor Plus, an all-natural treatment for the entire central nervous system. Neurofactor Plus is used to treat Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, insomnia, neuropathy, high blood pressure, stroke, depression, stress, chronic body pains, and much more. Visit them at 441 Old Southern Main Road, Chase Village, Chaguanas, or call 665-5433. Sanjivani for Life Ayurvedic and Body Care Clinic. Your health is your wealth. Welcome back to Rundad and Tobago. I'm Ramkinson. Joining us on set, uh, we have Mr. Nelson, founder of Caribbean Ideas Limited, and we're talking Caribbean market, marketing innovation experience. So we're talking yes. the mix. Correct. Uh, yes. Good morning. How good are morning. you? Thank you for having me. Now, Caribbean Ideas Limited is no stranger. So tell us a little bit about uh, what we can expect this time around. What is the mix? Well, so first of all, good morning. I thank you for having me. Um, MIX really is an acronym for the Marketing Innovation Experience and is an evolution of our conference series. Um, We've taken feedback from our attendees and we've actually evolved our conference into um, not just one event but also a leadership series, yes, but also a series of workshops where um, attendees can actually go into more detail in particular areas. Um, This year, uh, we, we live in a world where um, our consumers are hyper connected. Um, not only do you have access to the internet, but you also do have uh, you, your mobile, you're connected via your mobile, connected via your tablet, connected via wearables, and even smart devices in your home. And so uh, we created an analogy um, of the customer kingdom where um, we outline the expectations of these connected customers and uh, over five realms o- of the of the kingdom so first the realm of reach where um, customers expect that you would reach them where they spend time um, in the empire of engagement um, customers expect that you interact with them and they expect to interact with your brand um, more than just be marketed to um, in the in the kingdom of service um, customers expect multi-channel or omni-channel uh, service delivery. Um, in the kingdom of, of transactions, customers expect that it's easier to actually do transactions with your brand. And in the realm of knowledge, customers expect, well, that you know more about me with all of the data that is existing right now. Uh, you know about me, more about me so you can personalize your experience for me. Now, in terms of driving this evolution, actually taking away the points uh, that are important, what, 
What are you really hoping that people take away from this? Well, the key is that uh, brands should know and marketers should know that uh, their consumers are connected and continuously connected to the internet. And in order to reach them and to speak to them and to market their products, it's the traditional model of doing a campaign and just um, advertising to your customers, that's gone. You need to ensure that you engage in what is known as real-time marketing. So you're, you're at uh, touch points where uh, consumers spend their time. You're engaging them in, in relevant topics that they're interested in. And you become more relevant to them than just oh, a campaign that we think of that we're pushing to you. Now also, uh, looking at the keynote speakers, every time that you have an event, I know that a number of speakers have been invited. Uh, who are the keynote speakers this time around? Well, in this case, we have uh, a number of uh, speakers, and in the conference, our keynote is David Mimon Scott. He's a, a marketing and sales strategist. He's worked with companies like Google, Nestle, Ford, and helped them with their sales and marketing strategy. And so he'll be coming and talking a little bit about that real-time marketing and how you can actually use this technique to engage and conquer your customer kingdom. Now, tell me about what else is in the mix. Uh, what can attendees really expect from Caribbean Ideas this year round? In addition to the keynote, we also have, you'll be getting battle stories from brand, international brands like ESPN, and you'll also hear stories from local and regional brands like Quartz, where they have been using and leveraging technology to reach their, their, their customers and engage their customers. Um, we would also highlight that um, you know we've had, uh, we do actually have um, uh, a special for your Morning Brew audience, mm. and so if they actually go on to mixconference.com uh, slash media, uh, you can actually get a 15% discount on the conference tickets and conference price. You just type in the brew and you can actually get a discount there. Always a plus there, but you can, you know, once you're a viewer, you get some extra perks. Are your closing comments for that? Right. What would you like them to know? Well, we want to ensure that uh, brands know that the, the, there has been a major shift in how you actually engage with your audience. Um, your consumers are hyper-connected, and so they expect certain things of brands, um, and they expect that you are able to reach them where they spend time and engage them in a different way. And so by understanding that, you can now reach and increase your reach a, a wider audience and, and increase your sales. And so our keynote speaker, as well as some of our other, other speakers, will actually be touching on that and helping our audience get those techniques and, and be able to reach and reach their business targets um, easier. Looking at reaching your business targets easier. We take a very short break. When we come back, we have our final guest for this morning. Stay with us. Thank you. Sponsored by Marcuson and Nestle Orchard Vibe. Watch the original misadventures of Mr. Bean, Sundays at 7.30 p.m., only on CNC3. Best case scenario, I'll live maybe another couple years. But what good is it to just survive? You want to cook crystal meth? That's right. You know the business, and I know the chemistry. Waking up to action. Breaking Bad, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m., only on CNC3.
stays right there. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Nadal Spiegel here. Ramson joining us on set. Linda Osborne. Linda is the owner and designer of the brand Linda Osborne. And you can, you know, we have a lot of local designers that are making their name, making it big. And she's having a sewing workshop. And you know, it's not just something that you need to know. It's an essential necessity, and it's something that we should all know. Linda, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Hima. I'm fine, thank you. Now, a sewing workshop. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what you learn in this workshop. Okay, this is get towards people that uh, we need in the fashion industry because right now we have a lot of designers coming out every year and we have a problem with getting assistance, people to work for them. Mm -hmm. We need people who can sew, not, not, not another designer then. Mm -hmm. not, we, we, all, we, we have pattern makers coming out from these, some of these young designers are becoming pattern makers, but we need people to actually be able to do good work, skilled workmanship, and that is what this class is all about. Now, when you uh, talk about a sewing workshop, mm -hmm. are you learning to, uh, you know, because I, I don't want to use the wrong phrase here, but is it just basic sewing you're learning, or what exactly are you learning? You're learning sewing itself, not pattern drafting. Okay. Right? So you're learning to sew properly well and fast, right? So you're going to get practice. So this is people, you know, sometimes some people go to, to learn to sew, and they have to go to pattern drafting, and they don't like it, or they can't handle it and they drop out after a while. So people who can't handle the pattern drafting but they still want to be in the sewing business, this is for people like them. What is pattern drafting? Just pattern then? drafting actually be able to, to do the technical design on paper mm. to, to draft a pattern to make an outfit. Okay. So you do it by paper first and then you cut your garment, you cut the fabric from that. Uh, and okay, and during this workshop, uh, what it, in terms of the intensity of it, the days, the times, it's all it's for about. eight days. Actually, it's like it's it's an accelerated course, but it's since it's just sewing and no pattern drafting, mm -hmm. it um, we have uh, there'll be a lot of practice on the machine, so you'll actually get first hand work to work on the machine and to be able to to. Because a lot of time you do pattern drafting, you concentrate only on the patterns, mm -hmm. and then when it come to sewing, they have a problem. They can't sew neat. They can't sew fast. You know. So this is all about that: how to sew a, a zip on properly, how to do the proper facings, how to do proper pockets. You know, things like that. What is the most common mistake people make when they sew? What is the one thing they always get wrong? I know they have a problem with zips for sure. <laughs> Right, and sometimes um, putting on facings. Once you put on a facing badly, it, your clothes don't stay neat, you know. So it, all these fine things, it's sewing itself is what makes it in the end. You know, learning to, to do a pattern is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to sew properly. There's a technique to in handling different fabrics. Right, and I was going to ask about that because when it comes to different fabrics, uh, you know, is there something that is it something that they will learn during this workshop? Yes. But then this is in two levels to her. This is, um, I have two, two parts where it's there people who are inexperienced can come. And those who have some experience but they're not very good, they might be sewing for people, but they're not very good at, when you see a finished garment from them, it doesn't look finished, mm -hmm. right? This is for them where they get some sprucing up and some other knowledge that they may not have had before. Now, these are some pictures uh, that are up. Let's talk a little bit about some of these designs. Are these okay. all your designs? Yes. That's a jumper. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful jumper. Hmm. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and these all designs were featured when? Oh, these are on my website. Okay. Yeah. And definitely, and we have the website, and I know it's going to go up in a few minutes. It's www.lindaosborne. It's L Y N D A Osborne, O S B O R N E dot com. And the contact information is 289 9340. I think it's all going to go up in a few minutes um, to get in contact with Linda about the uh, event. But as we wrap the interview, mm -hmm. why should people want to learn? Who are you hoping uh, will attend this event? People who are looking, they're looking for employment in, in the swing in fashion industry and they want to be able to sew. They, they, are, they, they not, don't really want to be, to run their own business. They want someone, they want to work for someone. And uh, there are a lot of them like that, they just don't have the experience and they never got the, the opportunity to learn on machines because they don't have the, the, the heavy duty machines at home. So this is an opportunity where they learn on the heavy duty machine so they can be able to go and work for a fashion designer or a factory with the knowledge before. 
looking at the knowledge and uh, your ability to move forward and it's www.lindaosborne.com and the contact information 289-9340 I'm Hame Ramke soon we've actually come to the end of the morning brew on behalf of everyone attached to the show I wish you a safe and blessed day and uh, have a wonderful Monday trend and so don't let Monday blues get you down kind of keep smiling and keep moving forward and uh, on behalf of the entire crew you know we wish you a safe and good one and uh, whatever you do just keep smiling don't let the rain affect your sunshine today bye The Morning Brew was brought to you in part by Wendy's. every move our leaders make and reporting it all back to you with the most comprehensive local, regional, and international stories seven days a week. CNC3, 7 p.m. News. We're covering your world. Are you having problems receiving our signal? Call 320-6169 and we will be happy to assist you. C3. Good morning, I am Akash Samaru with your news headlines on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. Opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley has asked his party, the PNM, to consider major changes going forward with the belief that it will form the next government following general elections in 2015. He addressed the PNM's annual convention yesterday as they began deliberating on policies under a title Vision 2030. Among the issues discussed by Dr. Rowley was the state of crime. 335 murders so far this year. The real story is more than that. Because if they get shot on Monday and die on Friday, they're not counting that. But the bottom line is, Trinidad and Tobago has a serious problem of national security. And the criminal element has too much room to maneuver in Trinidad and Tobago. That is the number one priority of any government of Trinidad and Tobago, and the PLM commits to going on the job. Meanwhile, the UNC is promising that if it gets another term in government, it will reduce crime further. The party's PRO, Rodney Charles, says the government inherited a crime problem due to failed PNM crime policies. And he says the government was able to reduce crime in its first term in office. Mr. Charles is therefore asking the public to put the current administration back in government in 2015 and says the murder rate will go down to 200 if this is done. And that is why we need two terms. And I assure you, we're down to 330. So if you couldn't solve it in one, we're down to 330. Another? If you give... The Kamala Prasad Bicessa, five more years, it will be down to 200. And that's what the PNM but don't want. Another news, Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bicessa and THA Chief Secretary over London will meet this afternoon to discuss issues related to the governance of Tobago. The meeting comes on the request of Mr. London, who told reporters last week that the approach of the Prime Minister could be considered illegal. Mr. London says he is heading into the meeting with mixed feelings because of the process that led to the meeting being held in the first place. He says he is heartened that the Prime Minister has finally agreed to meet with him, but says he is disheartened that it took 15 months to get another meeting with Mrs. Prasad Visasa. And police have made a breakthrough in one of the four murders that took place between Friday night and yesterday. 
Two suspects are now in police custody after being held in connection with the killing of an alleged gang leader in Dago Martin yesterday. This is in relation to Jamaat member Deal Mattis, who was gunned down in the car park of True Value in Dago Martin. Investigators say they have since arrested two persons for the crime. Officers also say after the killing, they got information that four men allegedly close to Mr. Mattis were on their way to carry out reprisal killings. The men were intercepted and police found guns and ammunition in their possession. Senior Western Division officers say there will now be heightened police activity in and around Dingo Martin because of the killing. Well, stay tuned. Another news update comes up at the top of the hour right here on CNC3 and the TBC Radio Network. CNC3. The views and opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of CNC3. Testimonies. Chain of friends. Spiritual guidance. All under one roof. At the Universal Church, every day where many lives are changed, we now bring to you Holy Word at your home. Who is the judge of all the earth? God. Huh? God. So, will God not do what is right? What do you think? Yes. Huh? Yes. Will God do what is right? Yes. Let us see what it says. Abraham asked God if he would destroy the city if there were righteous people in it or less regardless of the number of righteous people God said he would spare the city for their sake then the men turned away 